to the lecture on competing theories of entrepreneurship. And after the lecture, we'll be able to learn the following objectives. Explain the theories of an entrepreneurship. Discuss entrepreneurial development program. Understand the entrepreneurship subject domain. Describe entrepreneurial behavior and motivation. Define the achievement and management success. Explain the entrepreneurial success in rural areas. Define innovation and entrepreneur. Discuss entrepreneurial input. Let's start with a brief introduction of competing theories of entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship is considered to be a vital component in the process of economic growth and development for various reasons. It is a mechanism by which society converts technological information into products and services. Entrepreneurship has long been seen as a synonym for establishing new small firms as a suitable vehicle for entrepreneurial endeavor. Corporate entrepreneurship as a field of research and practice are related to perceived weaknesses of the traditional methods of corporate management. Example, highly regulated, strict hierarchy, short-term focus, premeditation with cost minimization, and cutting slack, narrowly defined jobs. Let us now take a look at the theories of an entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship refers to a process of action an entrepreneur undertakes to establish his enterprise. It is a creative and innovative response to the environment. Entrepreneurship can be defined as an ability to discover, create, or invent opportunities and exploit them to the benefit of the society, which in turn brings prosperity to the innovator and his organization. Entrepreneurship function of innovation. Firstly, it can be the outcome of the introduction of a new product in the market. Secondly, it can be the result of a new production technology. Thirdly, it may arise on account of a new market. Fourthly, it may be the consequences of a new source of supply. Fifthly, it may be due to the new organization of any industry. Entrepreneurship an organization building function. Frederick Harbison states that the organization building ability is the most critical skill needed for the industrial development. Harbison's definition of entrepreneurship lays more stress on the managerial skills and creativity so far as an organization is concerned. Entrepreneurship function of managerial skill and leadership. Holslitz maintains that financial skills have only a secondary consideration in entrepreneurship. According to him, managerial skills and leadership are the important facts of entrepreneurship. He identifies three types of business leadership in the analysis of economic development of underdeveloped countries. Entrepreneurship function of high achievement. McClellan states that a businessman who simply behaves in traditional ways is not an entrepreneur. Moreover, entrepreneurial role appears to call for decision making under uncertainty. McClellan identified two characteristics of entrepreneurship. Firstly, doing things in a new and better way. And secondly, decision making under uncertainty. Entrepreneurship function of social, political, and economic structure. Limitation structure. The society limits specific activities to members of particular subcultures. This limitation structure affects all the members of a society. Demand structure. The limitation structure is basically social and cultural, but demand structure is mainly economic. The demand structure is not static, and changes with economic progress and government policies. Opportunity structure. This structure is necessary to increase the probability of entrepreneurial activity. The opportunity structure constitutes the availability of capital, management and technological skills, information concerning production methods, labors and markets. 
Labor's structure. Kunkel argues that the labor supply cannot be viewed on par with the supply of other material conditions like capital. He states that labor's means men and is a function of several variables. Entrepreneurship input completing and gap filling function. All the inputs in the production function cannot be marketed because some inputs like motivation, leadership, etc. are vague in their nature and whose output is underestimated. This gap filling activity gives rise to a most important entrepreneurial function, namely input completing. He has to marshal all the inputs to realize final products. Entrepreneurship function of group level pattern. Frank W. Young was reluctant to accept the entrepreneurial characteristics at the individual level. According to him, instead of individual, one must find clusters which may qualify itself as entrepreneurial groups, as the groups with higher differentiation have the capacity to react. Here we will discuss about the Entrepreneurial Development Program. Entrepreneurial Development Program means a program designed to help a person in strengthening his entrepreneurial motive and in acquiring skills and capabilities necessary for playing his entrepreneurial role effectively. EDP is primarily concerned with developing and motivating entrepreneurial talent and growing him to be an effective entrepreneur. An entrepreneur makes use of the factors of production to the fullest advantage of the society, create innovations, generate employment, improve the standard of living of people, develop backward areas, etc. Objectives or need of EDPs. To formulate project. To select project product. To analyze the environment. To acquire the basic managerial skills. Enable to communicate clearly and effectively. Develop a broad vision about the business. Enable to date decisions. Phases of Entrepreneurial Development Program Initial or Pre-Training Phase This phase includes the activities and the preparations required to launch the training program. The main activities are Creation of infrastructure for training Preparation of training syllabus Tie-up of guest faculty Arrangement for inauguration of the program Formation of Selection Committee Publicity Campaign for the Program Development of Application Form Training or Development Phase During this phase, the training program is implemented to develop motivation and skills among the participants. The objective of this phase is to bring desirable changes in the behaviors of the trainees. The trainers have to judge how much and how far the trainees have moved in their entrepreneurial pursuits. Content of training program. Technical knowledge. Once the entrepreneur selects a particular enterprise, the technical aspects of the trade is essential. He needs to also know the economic aspects of the technology, including costs and benefits. Achievement motivation training. In order to develop human resources, development of achievement motive is essential. The purpose of AMT is to develop the need to achieve, risk-taking, initiative, and other such behavioral traits. Market survey. The participants should be given opportunity to actually conduct market surveys for their chosen project. Managerial skill. The aim should be to enable the participant to look at an enterprise in its totality and to develop overall managerial understanding. Project preparation. A lot of time needs to be devoted to the actual preparation of project. Their active involvement in this task would provide them necessary understanding and also ensure their personal commitment. Post-training or follow-up phase. This phase involves assessment to judge how far the objectives of the program have been achieved. 
monitoring and follow-up reveals drawbacks in the earlier phases and suggests guidelines for framing the future policy. In this phase, infrastructural support, counseling and assistance in establishing new enterprise and in developing the existing units can also be reviewed. Now we shall understand the entrepreneurship subject domain. Entrepreneurship is a relatively young academic field in the early stages of its development cycle. This creates problems in defining the field and the scope of its research. Plaschka and Welsh argue that the development of entrepreneurship as a discipline went through four fundamental phases before it was acknowledged as an acceptable academic subject. Systematic theory development. The consensus surrounding an acceptable definition with regard to the acceptance of the fact that entrepreneurs can be trained, the movement towards more sophisticated research methods and statistical techniques, a move towards the usage of bigger samples, the division and attention to entrepreneurship form part of the theory development. Mainstreams of entrepreneurial research and its development. The development of a new product, example, a product never introduced before, or the substantial improvement of quality of an existing product. The discovery of a new production method. The term discovery does not necessarily mean scientific discovery, but the genuine application of an existing method to an indice. The discovery and exploitation of a new market. The term discovery does not necessarily apply to a new geographical market or unknown market, but rather a market that an industry has not explored before. Entrepreneurship defined. The word entrepreneur is derived from a French root entrepreneur, meaning to undertake. Drucker's definition of entrepreneurship, namely a systematic, professional discipline, brought a new level of understanding to the domain. Entrepreneurship as a career. An acceptable pointer to the professionalism of a discipline is when its existence leads to a career or job opportunities. Malberg critically states that entrepreneurship as a discipline is one of the few subjects that push integration and the combination of functional knowledge and abilities to the limit. Let's now have a look on entrepreneurial behavior and motivation. Behavior in turn is influenced by the way in which the external world is represented in the mind and by the individual's exercise of choice. Following are the points which explains that how entrepreneurial motivation influences entrepreneurial behavior. Need for achievement. Psychological factors that contribute entrepreneurial motivation are need for achievement through self-study, goal setting, and interpersonal support, keen interest in situations involving moderate risk, desire for taking personal responsibility, concrete measures of task performance, anticipation of future possibilities, energetic or novel instrumental activity, Locus of control. People with an internal locus of control are those individuals who also believe themselves to be in control of their destiny. In contrast, people with external locus of control sense that fate in the form of chance events outside their control or powerful people has a dominating influence over their lives. Risk taking. Risk-bearing is a prime factor in the entrepreneurial character and function. In particular, Hull and his colleagues found that the personality characteristics most important in identifying entrepreneurial types of individuals are functional task preference and personality constructs of creativity, risk, and flexibility. Values. Value orientation the principles of right and wrong that are accepted by an individual or a social group, the Puritan ethic, a person with old-fashioned values ethic, moral principle, 
value system, one of the major studies of personal values of entrepreneurs was done by Hornaday and Aboud. Problem solving style and innovativeness. Gardner refers to innovation as the central value of the entrepreneurial behavior since it is successfully taking an idea or an invention to market. Innovation and problem-solving capabilities are expected to be the core of the entrepreneurial capability of an entrepreneur. Here we will discuss about achievement and management success. According to this theory, an individual's need for achievement refers to the need for personal accomplishment. It is the drive to excel, to strive for success, and to achieve in relation to a set of standards. People with high achievement motive like to take calculated risk and wants to win. They like to take personal responsibility for solving problems and want to know how well they are doing. Now we shall understand the entrepreneurial success in rural areas. This approach assumes that the development of rural areas is based on stimulating local entrepreneurial talent and subsequent growth of indigenous companies specifically to accelerate economic development in a rural area it is necessary to increase the supply of entrepreneurs that is to build up the critical mass of first generation entrepreneurs who will take risks and accept the uncertainties of new venture creation and who will by their example stimulate an autonomous entrepreneurial process thereby ensuring continuous rural development public private institutions partnership. The community should utilize all the available incentives provided by the government to stimulate the development of economically depressed areas. The community should create and foster the development of institutions and a variety of partnerships to support local development. As experience shows, personal and organizational networks are very effective in achieving broad and fast-growing regional economic development. Institutions of Education The role of institutions of education in rural development is of crucial importance. They help to create a capable labor force and to maintain a skilled workforce in the community. Interfirm Institutions Efforts to support and enhance existing businesses within a community and to promote new enterprises in a community can be most successfully earned out through different interfirm institutions. Among different interfirm institutions, business incubators, industrial parks, different non-profit seeking organizations facilitating networking, and business support centers are one of the most successful ones promoting the growth of new and existing enterprises. Business incubators. Business incubators are a facility designed to assist the development of new enterprises. They help entrepreneurs by providing them with services which support and complement their own talents and abilities. The business incubator has emerged as a solution to the high failure rates among new firms. Industrial parks. Communities could increase the attractiveness of industrial parks to potential entrepreneurs by delivering conventional common infrastructural services, by customizable layouts that could be rearranged over time to meet user needs in a flexible way and by the final price, which should be much lower than the price of equivalent buildings in other, especially urban areas. Institutions facilitating networking. Networking among small firms permits aggregation of production. Large-scale purchases enables specialized firms jointly to manufacture finished products, facilitates shifts from product to product and market to market, and leads to important economies of scale as overhead functions are shared. Business Support Centers Business Support Centers can be established to meet the needs of startups, emerging or established businesses. Business Support Centers can be part of the local government or semi-private institutions or for non-profit private organizations. They can also be established at the community colleges 
or at the university to help small business owners learn necessary business skills at a low cost. Financial institutions. Potential entrepreneurs must have access to information such as which are the state financial agencies, banks that provide guarantees, issue tax-free bonds, direct loans to smaller enterprises or to consortia of enterprises. Public-Private Partnership The task of community leadership is to encourage close cooperation among different institutions supporting rural development, both public and private, in order to develop programs that would address the key barriers to community development, human and financial capital drain, inefficient use of natural and productive resources, inability to meet the local business needs, inability to create effective community infrastructure, inability to encourage new enterprise formation, inability to increase local economic opportunities, etc. Let's now have a look on innovation and entrepreneur. Innovation is the central value of the entrepreneurial behavior, since it is successfully taking an idea or invention to market. Innovation and problem-solving capabilities are expected to be the core of the entrepreneurial capability of an entrepreneur. The vast majority of entrepreneurs studied were characterized by sensation-thinking problem-solving styles. Features of innovation Innovations are the harbingers of change. Innovations can take place at the spark of light or can take a generation of experiments. Innovations are action-oriented, example, active and searching new ideas. Innovations help in making the product, service, or process simple and understandable. Sources of innovation. Present and potential customer. Existing companies. Raw material provider. Distributors and retailers. Research and development. Existing employees. Entrepreneurial support system. It is very difficult and complicated to create a system for entrepreneurs. While public officials and service providers understand the differences between, say, a small business center and a small business technology development center and the services they offer, entrepreneurs do not. Small business development centers, SBDCs, focus on growth businesses. The Cooperative Extension Service focuses on agriculture and microloan programs provide more general support to new entrepreneurs. One-stop shop to no wrong door. High growth technology businesses can receive such support from venture investors and others, but most entrepreneurs make do with one-size-fits-all programs for training, financing and the like. In practice, this means that business owners often receive the services that are available instead of the services that are needed. A systems approach allows service providers to segment their market. They can truly specialize in serving certain types of entrepreneurs and feel assured that other providers are effectively serving other market segments. What does an entrepreneur system look like? A true system links all relevant service providers, operates according to common procedures, and offers a customized and comprehensive set of public and private services for local entrepreneurs. Several characteristics are essential. Common intake procedures. Clear referral systems. Clear guidelines for entrepreneurs. The benefits. Creating an effective entrepreneur support system can generate huge benefits for local business owners and aspiring entrepreneurs. It can also stimulate a transformation for economic developers. Here we will discuss about the entrepreneurial input. Economic inputs. Economic environment exercises the most direct and immediate influence on entrepreneurship. The economic factors that affect the growth of entrepreneurship are Capital Availability of capital facilities for the entrepreneur to bring together the land of one, machine of another, 
and raw material of yet another to combine them to produce goods. Capital is therefore regarded as lubricant to the process of production. Labor. The quality, rather quantity, of labor is another factor which influences the emergence of entrepreneurship. The considerations of economic and emotional security inhibit labor mobility. Entrepreneurs, therefore, often find difficulty to secure sufficient labor. Raw material. The necessity of raw materials hardly needs any emphasis for establishing any industrial activity and its influence in the emergence of entrepreneurship. Market. The fact remains that the potential of the market constitute the major determinant of probable rewards from the entrepreneurial function. The size and composition of market both influence entrepreneurship in their own ways. Infrastructure. Expansion of entrepreneurship presupposes properly developed communication and transportation facilities. It not only helps to enlarge the market, but expand the horizons of business too. Social inputs. Social factors can go a long way in encouraging entrepreneurship. The main components of social environment are caste factor. There are certain cultural practices and values in every society which influence the actions of individuals. It has also defined limits to the social mobility of individuals. By social mobility, we mean the freedom to move from one caste to another. Family background. This factor includes size of family, type of family, and economic status of family. Background of a family in manufacturing provides a source of industrial entrepreneurship. Occupational and social status of the family influenced mobility. Education. Education enables one to understand the outside world and equips him with the basic knowledge and skills to deal with day-to-day -day problems. Cultural values. Motives men to action. Entrepreneurial growth requires proper motives like profit-making, acquisition of prestige, and attainment of social status. The strength of these motives depends upon the culture of the society. Psychological inputs. Many entrepreneurial theorists have propounded theories of entrepreneurship that concentrate especially upon psychological factors. These are need achievement, the most important psychological theories of entrepreneurship were put forward in the early 1960s by David McClelland. According to McClelland, need achievement is social motive to excel that trends to characterize successful entrepreneurs, especially when reinforced by cultural factors. Differences among societies and individuals accounted for need achievement being greater in some societies and less in certain others. Withdrawal of status respect. There are several other researchers who have tried to understand that psychological roots of entrepreneurship. The withdrawal of status respect of a group is the genesis of entrepreneurship. Motives. Other psychological theories of entrepreneurship stress the motives or goals of the entrepreneurs. Coal is the opinion that besides wealth, entrepreneurs seek power, prestige, security, and service to society. Now in the end, let us summarize what we have learned in this lecture. Entrepreneurship is considered to be a vital component in the process of economic growth and development for various reasons. The demand structure is not static and changes with economic progress and government policies. EDP is primarily concerned with developing and motivating entrepreneurial talent and growing him to be an effective entrepreneur. Entrepreneurship refers to a process of action an entrepreneur undertakes to establish his enterprise. It is a creative and innovative response to the environment. Entrepreneurial development program means a program designed to help a person in strengthening his entrepreneurial motive and in acquiring skills and capabilities necessary 
for playing his entrepreneurial role effectively.